Hello. So tomorrow I have my first ever solo exhibition of my photography at the print space in London, which is pretty exciting. But getting to this point has been a bit of a process and a journey, so I thought I'd bring you along and kind of show you what I've done to get to this point, so that hopefully if you're planning on having an exhibition sometime in the near future, or it's something you'd like to think about doing, or you're just interested, hopefully you'll learn something. So part one of having an exhibition is finding a vessel in which to have the exhibition in. So probably one of the most important parts, finding a gallery. So personally, for me, the print space got in touch after we had the last exhibition with them, which I curated, and they were interested in having some of my own work. So that was pretty simple. But if I was in your shoes, first of all, I'd pick a location. Not the place, but the general area. So say East London, I wanna be somewhere in there. Look around, just make a big comparison. And some things that are pretty important to think about is like how easy it is to get there. Is it near a, a tube station? That's pretty important. You want it to be easy for people to come and visit. Be a shame if no one came because it was too far away. Secondly, is there any footfall? Footfall is really important. So if you can see into the gallery and it's on a busy road, some people will just come and have a look because it looks interesting through the window. And that's quite a cool way of gaining some new people to look at your work and hopefully they'll be a fan. So next up, I guess it's pretty important to have some work ready. Probably if you're planning an exhibition, you should have something that you're wanting to share with the world anyway. So I'm hoping you're up to that point. So for me, this is my series called Donut City which is a series of 8x10 photographs which I took in my hometown and it kind of explores my feelings towards that. But there is a few more steps than just actually having the images. So first of all, if it's film, like mine is, you need to make sure you have scans that are kind of capable of printing at the size and quality that you want to have. So for my work, I got it all drum scanned. So I'm able to print the images at 50 inches with no loss of quality. But once you get these scans, you maybe think it's all over but it's definitely not because they come back nice and flat and you've got to do a lot of color correcting to get them to kind of how you envisioned them. So there's a lot of editing to do and then on top of just getting the colors right, which is tricky when it's color, if it's black and white, you got it good. But with color, it takes a while. But after that, even worse, you got to make sure they're clean. So the nature of film is just, th there is imperfections and dust. There's always going to be some and zooming in and removing all of this dust is really important because when it's printed and someone's up close and examining your, your print, you don't want them to see the imperfections in the dust because that just looks quite shoddy and it's definitely worth putting in the time, it's really boring. So the way I do it is in Photoshop and for the most of it it's the spot healing tool brush we just kind of click on all the bits and it generates a sample for the area. Or if it's a bit more tricky and the computer isn't kind of working in the algorithm, I use the clone stamp tool, which is definitely a bit more work, but it's worth it in the end. Next, I think it's good to start thinking about the layout of the exhibition. And what's important with that is how you want the viewer to kind of experience your images. Whether that's through the sequencing, the method that it's printed, the kind of mediums that you use, how it's like hung. Is it just on wires? Is it in a frame? Are they really big prints and you kind of stand back and experience them or they're really small and intimate and you have to go right up to them to kind of get the feeling. So for me, the first logical step of figuring this out is going and spending some time in the gallery. I think it's one thing like looking at a floor plan and trying to figure it out, but being in there and just trying to remember and truly visualize how much space there is, that's quite important. Next, I started to think of how any of the ways that I could show it could influence the narrative. So for me, the work is about cycles, and one of the kind of heavy motifs that shows the cycle is a roundabout. So I was kind of toying with the idea, is there a way of replicating that in the exhibition? So kind of it being, it's like a semicircle and there being no start and no end. So you can start on the right and go around, or you can start on the left and go around, and hopefully they make sense both ways. And there's no kind of like official text saying, start here, or a big bit saying, this is the exhibition, this is what it's about, and then you go around. It's just kind of left up for the, the viewer's interpretation. Next up, to kind of think about the sequencing a bit more, I went down to the print space, and I got eight by 10 prints of every single image that I was contemplating being in the exhibition. So there was about 30 images, 
and I knew that I couldn't have that many. So I think having the physical ones and being able to arrange them and look at them there, so much better than looking at on a screen. It's so much easier to make a choice and just be able to like move them around and quickly put them next to things. Just really important, definitely recommend doing that. And then once I was happy with what I'd laid out, I made a Photoshop file using the floor plan to kind of have it digitally so I could work on it a bit further. Also, whilst I was there, I did get some larger prints made of the different sizes that I was thinking of using just so I knew how big they were and how in relation they looked. So at the beginning, I was quite worried about having an 8x10 print next to something like a 40x32. It's quite a big gap and just kind of seeing how the relations lay out to each other, that was quite good. Also, whilst we were doing this, we printed out one image on every single paper stock which is quite interesting, there was like, I don't know how many there were, like seven, and I actually changed. I completely changed my mind and printed everything on the Hana Mueller Pearl, which is an inkjet, so a G-clay print. Before, I'd made my choice that digital C-types were what I like, but apparently not. This paper has a really nice kind of like subtle sheen to it and a really nice subtle texture. A fun fact that I learned is that inkjets perform much better at eight by 10 whereas a C-type isn't kind of optimized until it gets to 20 by 16. So this kind of helped considering I was having a few 8 by 10s that the 8 by 10s looked better. And at this point, I really wanted to build a physical model of the gallery and kind of continue with the hands-on approach of putting the mini prints on the wall. And I've seen like every good artist ever who's made a video about making an exhibition has done this, but I'm not very good at arts and crafts. So I just stuck to Photoshop. But if you're good at it, definitely give that a go because it's really cool. So once I had gone through and picked all the sizes and I was ready to order the prints, I went to the print space and they took me through something which I didn't know much about before, which is print profiling. So every printer and every paper is slightly different. That could be how warm or cold the paper is, how much ink seeps into it, which affects how like the black level will be. So on Photoshop, you can actually download the profiles and apply them to your image and you can get an idea of how the image will actually look on the paper instead of how it looks on your screen. First of all, it's pretty important to do this with a calibrated monitor, otherwise it's not going to be accurate anyway. But it was interesting to see that there were some alterations that needed to be happening and some of the colours that I had were slightly outside of like the printer's ability. So this was something that I'm definitely doing in the future and I have been doing a lot now. Um, but yeah, important. Then I chose the frames, which was something that kind of was an obvious choice for me, but they're nice, simple white box frames. This is how everything previously I have has been framed. So uh, I just wanted to keep it consistent with that. And speaking about frames, there also are some different frames because my friend Tom actually wrote some poems for me, which we wrote down together on a nice session of uh, on like artifacts, so like a piece of paper Tom found in Soho, and a napkin, and a letter. They're all kind of like little notes written to people, and that's kind of how the text and the narrative is shown in the exhibition, instead of like a vinyl speaking about it, just kind of left it more ambiguous. And uh, these, in instead of being just frame flat, they're going to be on floating frames. So hopefully they should look more like 3D and like an artifact instead of a photo, which hopefully should bring a nice aspect to it. And then I was ready to actually order the prints, which is really simple to do. So it all goes through the print spaces online hub and you just upload all the images, select all the settings and then just buy it like it's anything online. Nice and simple. This was like equally as daunting as exciting because I can't help but be slightly worried that I've set up one of the files wrong. You just have to make yourself as prepared as possible. After it is awarded, that's pretty much it. Just gotta wait until it is installed. I haven't actually seen them yet. Tomorrow morning at 11am I'm going to install it. So I'll take over again then and show you it going up on the wall and take you on a tour and also show you the opening night. So, here we are at the print space. Quite exciting. It is all ready. And now we've got to figure out how to put it on the wall, which should be interesting, hopefully. I just have to point at things and put them in order because I'm not very good 
at figuring out the actual distances and stuff every time I've done it before. I've got it wrong, so hopefully the professionals can help with that. So basically, my plan for how to proceed with this and how to get it actually on the wall was to lay out the exhibition along the wall in the places that we wanted. And at this point, I was able to make the switches to decide whether this image actually worked better in a different order. And then it was kind of about fitting the poems along with the images and thinking about the colour coordination and things like that. After we were ready with that, it was just about putting them up on the wall. So the important things to think about were what the best eyesight level was for it to be viewed for most people at the right height, how you want the different heights to play with each other. So on one of the walls, some of the pictures are higher than the other ones. And then on most of the walls, it's all equidistant and equi height from the centre. And then everything was just cleaned up and we are ready for the opening night. So first of all, thank you if you came down and said hello or just came and viewed the pictures. That's really cool. Secondly, I was so busy speaking to people that I kind of forgot to film stuff until quite near the end of the night. So it was a bit busier than it looked here. It, in fact, it was crazily busy. And thank you everyone for coming. Um, yeah, it was really cool. It's really cool to see everything on the wall as well. And um, I hope the images are enjoyed by some people. And finally, if you're in London, why not go and check the exhibition out? It's open until the 27th of June, and it's open Monday to Friday until 7pm. I've heard there's some pretty good photos on the wall, so it's definitely worth going to. It's at the print space, and the address will be in the description. And hopefully, for the people that aren't able to go but are interested, at some point I'll be able to record a little tour taking you through the layout and why I chose certain pictures and why I took them in the first place. So yeah! Thank you to the Print Space for making all this happen. It was good fun and I definitely learned some things and hopefully maybe you did too. Hopefully there'll be another video soon. But until then, see you soon.